Happy Easter everybody! Now, um, I've been asked to do a video about mukha extraction. Now the problem with that is that I think that should be shown one on one, person to person. There's a lot of things in weaving that should be shown person to person. So the person who's teaching can straight away you know, show you, you know, where you're going wrong, what you're doing right, what may be the problem, what may not be the problem, because mukha extraction has a lot of factors in it. So it starts with the right shell, the right type of um, New Zealand flax, harakiki. If you, if you have one that just doesn't want to strip, then there's not much you can do. The problem is if you have a teacher who's right there with you at the time, they can tell you that straight away. Or they would um, take you to the, the, the bush where you can harvest from. That is, that is good in their experience. That's something you can't teach in a video. And as much as I would like to, to make a video about that, I just, I just can't. So, like all my videos, they're not for beginners. They're not meant to be step by step, right from the start, tutorials. They refreshers, they add-ons, they tips and tricks. If you really want to learn, you know, how to weave, you need to find yourself a tutor. Um, there are plenty of, you know, videos out there, online tutorials, etc. I still would recommend you find someone in your neighborhood or where you can go to for wānanga and, and tutorials on a regular basis or even just once, twice a year to a person who can take you under their wings rather than someone like me who's just talking to you through a camera. Um, it, it just makes it so much easier because that person can tell you right away if you make a mistake, can point you in the right direction or if you're, if you're making something, something really right, can tell you as well. So, on the part of mukha, so we've got, so the, the, the goal is you know, to have a lot of these, if that's what you're really after. And it all, as I mentioned, depends on the variety of flax. Not every single one strips very well. There are some, they strip well for mukha, but not good for pew pew, or the other way around. Um, there is this persistent rumor out there, I don't know who spread it, that all black edge bushes have a lot of mukha in them and are good for all sorts of weaving. Not true. Uh, there are plenty of black edge bushes who have a lot of mukha in them, but there's plenty of black edge bushes where you can't strip it at all. The, the para or the membrane on the outside of the leaf just sticks. Or it's too fine. Uh, there, there's all sorts of things. On the other hand, my preferred um, variety for mukha and pew pew has orange edge. So, the best thing to do is for you, as I said, apart from having a tutor who can show you what to look out for, is to test. And the best way to test the bush for mukha is to take your shell and test it right there and then. There's no point in harvesting from a whole bush, come home and realize it's not working. And then it's probably a really tough bush that is hard to prep for anything else. So, I would recommend if you see something that looks promising, test it. And not all that are stand straight are good for mukha. Equally, not all that are droopy are bad for mukha. So it's, it's really, really in the testing. So there's, for example, there's a variety, Taiori. Taiori is a very, very droopy, very long, it's a black edge, silvery kind of um, keel. And normally you would use this one for, for kitty or backpack because of the length. It strips beautifully. So, so find yourself a tutor. They can tell you. Now the other thing, as mentioned before, you need a decent shell. So if you've watched my tutorial on shells, what to look out for, then you already know. If you haven't, watch it. So the shell is, is your number one tool. And the other thing is a knife. Or, yeah knife or a piece of obsidian 
but I, ideally a knife. And then you, you strip your leaves and you take the outside edge, the midrib off. And I mean, these, we're in the middle of the lockdown, so these are basically leftover bits. And they're not the best, and they're really short. I couldn't use them for much else then, so I've, I've, I've used them for this tutorial or, or for this demonstration. And so what you do is then you cut the, the top and the bottom off so you have them nice and straight, no fluffy bits at the top, no thin bits either. And you lightly, lightly score them on the back with your knife so they, it's hard to see, so they're halfway through but not all the way through. You do a close up in a minute and so that's that's your first bit i actually soak these in water for 10 minutes uh, to help a little bit because they're so old they, they're close to three weeks old now so it's ideally you want it as fresh as possible for anything to do with mocha um, you know harvest today process tomorrow that kind of thing for all other weaving you can leave them for a week or two but you know, and they, they actually it helps with the with the harpini if, if they're a little bit softer, if they have less moisture in them. For mukka, you want them really nice and fresh. So we'll dive into this demonstration in a minute. That's just a little, just a little close up here. So this is the end result what we want. So this is a piece of mukka that's been mirrored. And this is the cut. So you can see on that side is just you can just see it on this side it's half cut through see so that's you know the knife can't be too sharp or too blunt and so this is the end result that you that you're looking for so welcome back um face is cut off <laughs> otherwise we <laughs> i can't fit it all in so i'm wearing a glove it's just um you know, harakiki is as bad as paper in terms of cuts. So when you do a lot of it, um, it's a good idea. You know, it's just one of those cheap one dollar ones. You know, have my shell, have my cut, and have my little length of um, harakiki. And then I just in the middle where the cut is. Oh, by the way, the cut is roughly in the middle. And I started off a little bit. I'll show you. There's a little bit there. Right, and so, and then you can loop it. It's hard to see. Here you go. Loop it. Right, hold it out. I've got a tarpaulin in the bin under here, so the rubbish goes straight in. I st always start with a thin end, but at the end of the day, it's up to you if you start with a thin end or the, big end, or the thick end. Same sort of thing, other side, looping. Take the putter off. And you've got your, oops, there we go, camera angle. You've got your raw mukka. Comes the leg. So it's good to wear shorts. Weavers don't need shavers. You half it. Okay. Half, top and tail. A little bit of spit and water. And then, oops, demonstration gone wrong. Like right that. There you have it. Show another one. Faster vision. Face. Hold it. can do a couple of these and then do this process, the second process, at a little later stage. A lot of people do that actually. There you go. 
and they're that short, not that easy. And there you have it, little ropes. I have seen the same procedure being done with the help of teeth and other tools with um, other materials, bark. Uh, last year I've met a lovely Senegalese woman who processed boab bark and made little ropes out of these. And she had them toe, like she had a, a thing on her toe and she was doing it all by hand, what I've just done in one row on my leg. So, and these ones, like these short ones, I use them for handles and things like that. But obviously you want to make them long if you want to make a kākahu of some description. Anyway, so that's my take on extracting mukka. It's not for the faint-hearted. It's not something you would want to learn of a video. It's something you would want to learn from a tutor in person who's right there with you. So as much as I would like to help you guys, but um, that is something that should be taught face to face. Actually, there's a lot of things that should be taught face to face, but yeah. So happy Easter and happy weaving, everybody. There you go. I'll just make it look easy. And for all of those, for all of you that are not familiar with this material or this extraction method, e.g. if you're in the rest of the world outside of New Zealand, um, the material is New Zealand flax and the fiber is called mokka. So, very highly prized. natural fiber which is why New Zealand got the name or rather the plant not the country got the name New Zealand flax by the first Europeans who discovered it they thought it looks and feels like flax it's got nothing to do with the plant that Northern Europeans know as Linus or Flax. There you go. So there were factories um, established in the country that process the fibers not as gentle and as nice as this. Um, and they made carpets and ropes and all sorts of other things out of it. Go. You can make a lot of these. I'll make it look easy, I know. And these are short, but normally. You would have them two, three times the length of these. There you go. Quick demonstration on how to extract mukka out of New Zealand flax, which is the fiber within the leaf. A lot of weavers prize this as absolute gold. And you can put them all in a nice little pile and make garments out of it. It's very soft, it can be processed, it can be boiled. A lot of other things can be done with it, so there you go.